Welcome to the Tales of a Red Clay Rambler podcast, featuring interviews with culture makers from around the world. This is Ben Carter. I'm going to be your host. If you'd like more information on the show, please visit our website, talesofaredclayrambler.com. Welcome back to episode 430 of the podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Artist, writer, and critic Anthony Marino passed away last week, so we are rebroadcasting an interview I did with him and Alex Kraft in 2015. They were the co-curators of 50 Women, a celebration of women in ceramics, which took place in 2016 at the American Jazz Museum in Kansas City. That coincided with Densica's 50th anniversary, so you'll hear us talk about their curatorial process, as well as the active community that they built using Facebook. Without further ado, we'll get to the interview. Let's start talking about the curatorial idea uh, for the show, which is 50 Women in Clay. It's morphed into 50 Women as the, as the actual physical A title. A celebration of women's contribution to ceramics, which is the formal title, yeah. Sure, and you guys are co-curators. Yes. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Either one of you, would you like to talk about the, the seed for this idea? Well, you know, it began at, an, at Enseca last year. I think it was like I said to Alex, you've gone to like 18 of the last 20 in Seekers. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, I've gone to like 18 of the last 20. Have we ever seen what we're talking about? Has there ever been a women's show? And And there has in niche regards. You you know, we've seen wood fire women's shows. I saw a show related to Mishima. I want to say one maybe two years ago, but never an all-encompassing show j- just relating to women. Yeah, like even here, there's there was a motherhood show, but it's nine artists and it's primarily sculptural, but it's never been, you know, cross-discipline, you know, full-fledged, large-scale show with, you know, well, they've all had really good artists in it, but you know, we just a large scale show. We we neither one of us remember there being one. And then with the fifty years coming up, of course, we thought, well, this is the time it needs to happen. And also, and it also one of the things that we we both were kind of. It was odd because even before we got the title or the venue or anything, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. But there there were a few sort of ground rules that Alex and I, even though we didn't we didn't really speak on them, but we knew we both had the same view. And one of which was we didn't want to necessarily be a feminist or a feminist theme show, because part of what we want to do is sort of I don't want to say anti feminist because well, what I would say. It's not a reactionary show. That would be where I was coming from with it. It's we're we're looking to put this out to this larger platform and finding ways to be inclusive. And from a critic, I mean, and I'm coming from it from a critical background, which is slightly different than Alex, in which to me, the I didn't want it to be a feminist show. Because to me, I don't want people looking at a Beam Finneran or a Tip Tolan and going, oh, that's really good for a woman artist. No, that's really good for an artist. Mm-hmm. The, the idea that women is a qualifier to any of the artists in the show is an absurdity. They are all excellent ceramic artists. And they should be seen as excellent ceramic artists. Any criteria you use for any male artist, you can use for any of our artists in the show, and they will be they will more than exceed those criteria. 
I'm just so proud of our our list of artists and as well as the larger platform of people who are moving into our social media and so forth. It's really been exciting. It, it's been a learning experience on many, many levels. levels. And yeah. The things we've learned just about the history of ceramics and stories that I had no idea about, like, is it Eva Zenzel? The mm, mm-hmm. Zizel. 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 Yeah, who yeah. escaped Soviet Russia only to go to Nazi Germany and have to flee Nazi Germany and then become an icon of American design porcelain is that's like a star, a script that would be rejected by Hollywood because it's too insanely fanciful and it happened. And, you know, we're learning that and I, and it's, re- it's really been a great experience. It in has that been. Way. Yeah. on so many ways. Well, before we get into the individual stories, cause I do want to hear some of these, um, I want to ask you a dumb question, which is an admittedly dumb question, but why do we need a show called 50 Women? Why doesn't Sika need a show called 50 Women in 2015? I think it's a great question. And one answer would be perhaps we, perhaps we don't need it. But when we were initially thinking about the idea, we each did a very loose, casual survey among people we've respected and, you know, said, well, what, what do you guys think? Is this a crazy idea? Are we, is, does, does this need to happen? It is 2015. Um, and, and really I'd say maybe it doesn't, but there's, there's such a great desire for the show to happen that we moved forward, that we said, why, there's no reason to live in, in that fear. We, we, we have this momentum. We have people who are saying, yeah, this needs to happen. Why hasn't it happened yet? Let's make it, let's make it happen. And even past that, not just saying it with words, but saying it with uh, time and effort and, um, you know, volunteering and our, and these, these people who have come on board as, as, our our team just from kind of out of the ether because they feel so such ownership in this idea and yeah and and the i'm basically saying the same thing she is in that i'm going to go with a sort of cynical capitalist defense of this show which is there may not be a, a need but with the market there's a demand and if the market demands it, that's its own justification. We don't have to say why it's needed. And if it wasn't needed and if there wasn't a demand, and you'd agree with this, Alex, I think, it wouldn't be happening. Getting a show in Kansas City for the 50th anniversary of Inseca, both Alex and I, when we finally got the confirmation, we I'm were nodding like, my head. <laughs> I think we both needed to smoke a cigarette. We were like, yes. Uh, my, I felt this, this massive weight release that I had no idea was sitting on my shoulders. I was, I'm still I'm so, just so excited for our, our show and for, uh, it, it's so much more than just, it started as a seed of, of, mine and Tony's but it's it's so much more it's becoming this it's just it's this idea that's greater than itself and that is can be explored in so many varying ways and one one of the reasons I wanted to ask about the need and I mean maybe need is a tricky word because as as artists we we do differentiate between needs and wants because we often live in lands of fantasy and imagination like that's our that's our playground Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm but one of the things that I was hinting at and I'd like to hear you guys talk about is that the moment that you segregate out any group of people, it increases and decreases value at the same time. I had done a panel yesterday where Malcolm Smith got up there and he, he made what was an incredibly passionate and I mean, he had people crying in the panel. And one of the things he talked about is as a black artist, he has this weight on him where he has to be represented as a black artist. He can't, you know, it's like 
white artists don't have to represent their entire that somehow that's on him and there that's one of the reasons why when we were going one and i i had had the idea of the title which was originally going to be 50 years 50 women and when i sent it to alex she's like yeah that's it because we didn't want it to be you know a we didn't want it to be a labeling them as artists we want them i mean labeling them as women artists these are great artists who are doing great work and we're just celebrating it you know and so i think i i think that's a point in that and there is a danger to that but and on the other side i think the need and the 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 need just to represent women and show how much they they're doing in the field far outweighs any potential uh ghettoization or marginalization that the show could do because i don't think anyone who's really sophisticated is going to marginalize women over it i think they'll see you know it, they'll see past that but so it yeah there is a downside but the upside is far, far more important. The risk reward, the risk, the reward far outweighs the risks. I second what Tony's saying and really getting back to that thought at the, in the initial formation of this idea, um, you know, uh, just, just trying to think about, okay, well that back to the idea, maybe it, maybe there's not a need but we have such a desire. Let's move forward with this. And also looking to other colleagues saying, am I, am I, you know, is, is I, I see the potential for this to go in different spectrums um, and just moving forward with it. And so how did you guys choose the artists? Cause it 50 is a lot, but it's also, it's hard. I would imagine yeah. to choose 50. Well, I mean, we we just made a list mm -hmm. each. We each made a list of approximately 100 artists. And um, basically, we're doing all of this through email since we last saw each other at Nsika. Um, And then back and forth, many of the artists we selected were um, well known to each of us. Uh, many of them were only known to one of us. Uh, in the end, the people who were selected for the final show had some connection to one of us uh and we were really thinking of, again about creating this this show where we had artists um at different levels in their career with different um backgrounds uh really just across the board working every so discipline that it, so that it wasn't just well here's here's everybody you know in another show again but some some um thinking internationally thinking about people who are in grad school still, uh, people who are um, finishing uh, uh, Professor Emeritus or has someone who's, you know, the life cycle of people in general. So trying to make it this really um, very open possibility. Um, but at the same time, uh, making a point to uh, that, that these are really high ca caliber um, makers in our field even though they're at all of these different la layers in their career. And, you know, we, we also thought it was really important because, I mean, from a critical point of view, um, I've been sort of, I've tried to be the champion of egalitarianism. That's, mm -hmm. that's sort of, that, it, that, it's that's so important. That's a way. That's mm -hmm. a hyperbole. Like it needs me to be a champion. That's absurd. I'm not but that I know important. What you mean. <laughs> I know but what you mean. <laughs> that that's sort of one of the. And so we. I mean, you know, there's the idea that you know, if you fire something to cone seventeen, it's better than something fired to cone ten, and you know, or you know, or low fireware. And we wanted to have slip casters we have functional artists we have terry frame who's who's working in video yeah. even we have installation we have 
uh, so really making a point to move across the spectrum of our field. We have a Turkish artist, Sybil, who created an amphitheater that's completely tiled. It's an outdoor ceramic museum. And, you know, and the thing is, you know, there are people out there who, you know, that, that would say, you know, tiling isn't really ceramic. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Absolutely <laughs> is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's wonderful stuff. And, you know, so we that was one of the drives is not not just in a way the one of the one of the kind of unintended upsides of having what would see as an arbitrary limitation of them being female is then we didn't have to pay attention to any other criteria we could put whoever we wanted in other than they were all strong artists and now and on choosing um i think it was really important to have two jurors available because there are people who i selected who alex never heard of and or, vice versa and and then alongside that not to cut you off tony but also that that it's it's this show that's it's not just me as a female person saying 50 women that there's this balance that Tony's also a guy saying, yeah, this is something relevant. Let's move forward with it. And then also to have that perspective in our curation as well. Yeah. And, I, and, 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 and from my point of view, it's important because I can think of nothing more elitist and sexist than to have me say women, are great ceramic artists, but they need a man to sort of identify who they are. So I, I I'm glad to be, I, I was more than happy to work with Alex because where we have a really great balance, and I don't want to. I we we are a, a great balancing force on one another. I I meant that in a great way. <laughs> yeah, don't. Her, 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 if her husband's listening, don't no. get jealous. Oh, yeah. No, I wasn't meaning that. I just Bye. meaning that we're we bring to the table some of some similar similarities but also um some of our differences i feel like we're we've really been a great team in working yeah. together on this along with the other team members that we have, we've brought on board we both have i would say now understanding we're talking a sliver of knowledge of american ceramics let alone world ceramics we uh, we both have pretty huge slivers of knowledge I've published over a hundred articles, probably 80 of them have been on ceramics. Um, and a lot of clay nationals, a lot of student shows. So I have a pool of knowledge to draw from that's pretty outstanding. You've done like every residency on the face of the planet. <laughs> so I've I've gotten to to have a just a really I've gotten to know a lot of people in different areas as well. So it's just been really great that way. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity actually to, to jump in here and, and back up from the show actually and talk about your experience as an artist and where you feel like in our field you've been labeled as a woman artist or you've been just working as an artist. Because that's really the issue we're talking about right. in a nutshell is when does the label of being a woman artist help or hurt an artist? So can you talk to that in your own personal experience? Because, I mean, two, two men talking about this, like yeah, we... Yeah, it's kind of... It, yeah. Right. Well, that's an interesting question, Ben, and I I don't know why I hadn't thought of that one. Well, on one hand, and this comes to Tony and I had been to talk about this just a little while ago. My name is Alex. Alex could be male or female. Um, so there are plenty of times that I'm labeled as a, as a man, uh, not necessarily as a benefit or a negative. Um, but that, that's something that happens to me. Oh boy. As far as being a female, uh, I feel like I'm flailing. Well, let me ask you in a different way. Then. Yeah. Do, do you think in our field that gender neutrality is the norm? in terms of the way that people look at work? Or do you feel like that there is a gendered perspective that's either taught in schools um, or that is even, like, let's say, in, in the organization of Enseca itself? 
it's that's very f- hard to generalize for me. Mm, it sure, feels sure. to me like it's been it occurs where uh, where gender becomes an an issue, either positively or negatively. I can't say that it's it's such it's an uh, always something that I'm I'm consistently and always dealing with. Have you ever felt held back, like that you were at, like actively being marginalized, um, either in like let's say a, um, in an exhibition setting, or in something where you're involved in a group where you felt like you were being marginalized within our field because of your gender? Yes, although I I feel at this point it it's become f- far less so. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. As a man, it's hard to tell if that's getting better. I think sexism is embedded in, in hierarchy itself um, or, or class struggle. I mean, every hierarchy is embedded with some, some baggage. Layer of information and, and how you are in the world or what, you're, what background you come from and these things you don't even realize are, are ingrained within you. Yeah. Um, so how I'm has having, it gotten better? Yeah, I'm having trouble pulling specifics um, aside from... Well, just the, the the even within my role as an educator, my classes are. Uh, I'm thinking differently about the PowerPoint lectures that I'm sharing, um, in uh, making sure that I'm including a, the balance of our history and ceramic arts um, that really makes sense to to the the women in my in my classes um and my classes are are often more female than male it doesn't matter um but just making a point to really share not not just a one-sided history certainly we need to know about our granddaddy volcus but who else can we share as a as a uh, a balance to that and I think the perception of history is one of the ways that sexism slips into all of the conversations that we have in America. Mm-hmm, and this mm-hmm. is this is in, in the West as well, because we tend to look backwards with a I don't want to say a discerning eye, but an eye that that likes to emit things that are uncomfortable. And we like to only tell the story of, of whoever is the most powerful. Sure. Yesterday, one of our artists, Shalene Valenzuela, was giving a lecture. and. She, at the introduction of her le- lecture, she talked about like in 12th grade, she read like as three sentences in you know, a 300 page his, uh, history text. Oh, the U.S. happened to intern Japanese Americans during World War II. And her reaction is, why am I learning about this now? <laughs> you know, it's pretty important. And in three sentences rather than an yeah. entire volume. If there is a bias, I think there is a bias in history of because, you know, people know Peter Bocos, Rudy Audio. But do they know Francis Senska? Because no. they should. Yeah, they yeah. should. Yeah. And or or I mean, yeah, you could say, you know, Tatika Takiezu may may filter in that, but my my thought is Tatika Takiezu is every bit as prolific and good as Vokos, if not better. And uh, there are plenty of other artists, and I think prior where it's gotten a lot better is there, like Francis Senska was identified as an instructor, but you know because she taught audio and Vokos. And it sort of marginalizes her as a maker. And I think right now we have one of the things we're saying is these are great makers. I mean, you know, they, you know, and that identifying women strictly for their virtual virtuosity and clay. I wouldn't say it's necessarily needed but it doesn't hurt anything and it's it's a pretty good thing to do. Well, I feel like I wish we would have had this show every single 5-year period from Agreed. 1950 to now. Well, or before. And, <laughs> and then I think 1970s, you know, what how is it that I that 
that we're sitting here now, but, but I'm, I'm so proud of us for doing so. And again, it's just wanting to share these artists with the world, you know, um, and that it can be this multi, uh, faceted exploit that it can be past the artists we we although difficult it was we finally selected that it, it it's then extended into this larger network of social media and and it you know i think that's such a uh, a part of what it can be in 2015 and in getting going way back to the game the other thing that was really important and alex and i have been telling everyone we can we did we did we we each in 48 hours came up with a list of 100 each with a with a crossover of like 40 which means within less than 48 hours we had come up with like 160 names both of us were like yeah they could be in the show there are so many hundred artists who are not in this show who could easily i i would say the there show. are there are a thousand artists yeah. if on the lower end we're just you have we were really focused on the the 50 in relation to the show and how many how much can we fit in the museum and, <laughs> and how much we can balance out because we need we needed artists to occupy a certain space i'm not marginalizing her by in this by any means because i think she's a fantastic artist heather may erickson does slip cast functional work and we, that needs to be represented because that is a valuable part of ceramics. And I Absolutely. think it's an increasingly prominent place in ceramics. People are accepting it more and more. And, you know, there's, and, you know, we're, it's not just gender hierarchies that this is about. This is about all hierarchies. The idea that, you know, I was at someone's graduate school critique and they had, you know, 500 manufactured cups and 500 wheel thrown cups. And everybody in the audience was like, oh, no one appreciates hand build work anymore. I go, yeah, that's a point. But if you look at these cups, you know, among the 500 wheel thrown, there's a lot of crap. There's a lot of really among the 500 manufactured cups a lot lower percentage, but there are some really well-designed work. So we, we, we needed, I think we were both concerned that, and what's odd is 50 seems like way too low of a number to capture what's going on in ceramics. I mean, it's an almost an absurd thing. If you wanted to really capture the, cons the complexity, you need like a thousand. Can actually, can each of you, and we'll start with you, tell me one artist that you championed in, in this process and, and why you think that they represent the field as a whole. And we'll start with you, Alex. Sherbani Dasgupta um, is someone I w was eager to bring on board. Um, certainly a, a colleague, someone who I've, I've have a professional relationship as well as a friendship with and who I've been able to see really blossom in her work. Um, she has uh, an international presence. She's an um, Indian. Uh, she has an, un um, her work is sometimes uh, politically driven, which I felt was really relevant to the show. Um, and her work is, is not the norm is she's working with these uh, marbleization in relation to the porcelain. Um, she has a very specific aesthetic that I felt had not been uh, aired at the point that we brought her on board. Um, and so I felt like she had this, uh, uh, the real possibility with her work, uh, semi-installation, um, but still object-oriented. Um, and just as technically uh, beyond proficient, um, but also this very loose, lovely way of handling the clay. Um, so that would be one possibility. I could go on and on. Miranda, oh. <laughs> Let's start with one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then can you can you say one? I would say Bean Finneran. And I once was in an English class and 
the the instructor challenged the students by saying the mark of truly great art is it invents its own appetite and he talked about ode to joy and he goes before beethoven wrote ode to joy no one needed to hear it but if you hear it once you need to hear it for the rest of your life for me rhapsody in blue is that way i mean once i've heard rhapsody in blue that i just need to hear that and the artist who uh did that for me was being Finran. And you know, with her work to jump in, it's she started into this new way of thinking about material that I feel no one else had done. And now, you know, it's it, there's new iterations of that idea, but she was, in my mind, the first to really move forward with that with multiples and with stacking and with uh, installation in, in the manner that she does. Color, and sim- com- simplicity to complexity. I've done a few how-to articles, and one, and the last one I did, I, I started out with one of the problems with being with coming up with a really great idea is once you realize it, it's sort of self-evident and almost stupid until you realize that no one's thought of it before. And you look at Bean Finneran's work, and if your audience doesn't know, she does like ceramic colored rods, and she'll stack like 20,000 of them into this big cush ball on the floor. Or maybe 100,000 or (laughs) or 200,000, yeah. You just look at them and you're like, it's like, why didn't anyone that is so freaking cool why didn't anyone think about it and with her work it's it feels plastic it feels it's non it's not ceramicy it's not ceramics land um and i think that's a relevant part of what she's making that's a part of her vocabulary is that it's reaching outside of the material and also for me even though being finneran is absolutely known worldwide i think she she's been in by an ounce she's you mean if you go to italy or australia and you say being thinner and they know who she is i've only seen her at like two Ansicas, and one was i curated in her show and uh just a personal aside um i've worked with her as a curator and basically to being to me, especially early on, was like an elephant to a mosquito. I mean, I needed being far more than being needed me. And, you know, but I didn't talk. I have never, she has been always extremely gracious and extremely appreciative. And I think that's one thing that Alex will say. You know, there are artists in the show like Beth Lowe, Janice Mars Wonderlick, who... Real. This is another line on their resume. But they're willing to, they, they're they just as excited about this show as we are because they understand the the larger picture. They understand the importance of, of yeah. this being outside of just us. It's, it's about yeah. c- ceramics, women in general. And Alex has talked about people coming on board. Uh, and... Uh, a great ex- example of just sort of the generousness of artists who are, who don't need to be generous. Um, Janice Mars Wonderlick, if she wants, she could go full scale, a hundred percent diva on us. And as far as I'm concerned, because of the quality of her work, she's in the show, but this show would not happen without her, without her ours. Right. And, uh, I don't know, RZ Umali. Umali, uh-huh. And she is our Kansas City liaison. And she's, again, one of these people we've talked about. Well, well truly, I, I I have to plug our our, our two women who are uh, should be in the room with us right now, RZ oh, Umali and Melanie Shaw. And Melanie is our, our um, media coordinator. And these are people who are working strictly uh, volunteer who just saw our 50 women Facebook page and said, you know, 
we can help you and we believe so strongly in in this idea how how can we further this how can we, we make we this need happen to make this happen and we're, we'll give you our labor and yeah it's been amazing and what happened with rz is when well i talked to her early on like la- about a year ago and it was funny because I said, yeah, you know, there are a few women. You probably don't know any of them because, you know, the ceramics. She's not a ceramics. Uh, I mean, she's a uh, works at the Women's Center, K- Kansas City. I said, you know, you know I think I, I'm pretty sure Janice Mars Wonderlick will be in the show. And she was like, Janice Mars Wonderlick. <laughs> so, you know, when it looked like, e- and even before we, she was, she, she got the venue for us. If we did not know her, we, this show would not happen. Period. But I called Janice. I sent an email to Janice Mars Wonderlook and I'm like, you know, she loves your work. Um, we'll cover shipping. Do you mind sending her a small piece? It would. And that also has to do with the, the funding that we've been working with yeah. with the Indiegogo and, and Kickstarter. So she had volunteered. Janice had volunteered to. Um, she actually volunteered two pieces. Two pieces for that initiative, which is uh, um, amazing. Can you explain that, what you've done to, to raise money for the show? Oh, sure. Um, and again, that comes back. To, uh, I have to say Melanie Shaw has been the main person in, in making that come together but we've put together indiegogo proposals um and now we're moving into a kickstarter proposal i'm sorry kickstarter uh fundraising um in order to help us to acquire um uh funds towards the shipping and that's especially towards the artists some of our international artists people who uh we can't get into the show if we we can raise the funds and then uh, as well as some of the in, the insurance needs. So um, it's pretty specific monetary goals that we have in relation to getting this show to happen. Um, so that's, we've been doing that. We have, um, uh, we've have these artists who have volunteered pieces towards it, um, towards a, a, Both an auction. Both male and female, Exactly. By the way. And then um, I'm, I threw a, uh, bunch of cups mel we uh, some of our artists have thrown cups so then for a 50 a 50 dollar donation then that's helped to get those funds moving along we you know and we're also doing things like grants and we're doing we're trying to we're trying to get sponsorship deals and alex and i were talking um in the car about this and because artists know i'm a critic they'll come up to me and they'll say I'll let you write about me. And my sort of reaction is, you know, shouldn't that be a little bit the other way around? Because when I was in graduate school, I I wanted anyone on earth to write about me. And both of I from the very both of us from the very very beginning have been concentrating on what we're bringing to the people who we're engaging with. Absolutely. Making a, a real point to, to know that, to be sure that this is not a self-involved endeavor, that this is, is truly uh, a service to the field. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, or even, even something like, you know, you know, like with RZ, you know, and let me, I should fit Janice paid for shipping. She didn't, she said, don't worry about it. She'll pay. And then RZ had actually gone on vacation for two weeks. But Monday morning, she sent us an email, which is like, I'm going to go into schoolgirl mode. <laughs> she was just over the moon. And, but that, that, was, that was important. I mean, part of me wanted to send her one of my pieces. Um, but I knew she, you know, I, and I'm pretty darn good. I'm not, you know. But but she would value a Janice Mars Wonder look far more, and that comes back to just the generosity that we've found uh, in in every step of the way, yeah. on every level. So, and I think that again comes back to the concept that people are behind this idea, um, and and not even just in the physical exhibition, but in uh the momentum past that in relation to social media and outreach and how other ways that we can promote um and and and, and in, in an inclusive way 
I can't speak for myself. I mean, because I have sort of a critical, because I have a critical background. There are people who want to know me just because I can write about them and I can write really well about them. So any sort of network I have has that sort of Machiavellian tint of I, I, I provide a service, but one of the great things in, um, Alex, because of her personality, has this huge reservoir of goodwill. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, well, she is you. loved by everybody, uh, and she damn well <laughs> should be. I mean, I think it comes back to that the balance that we talked about. We just are such a great team that way. I, I it's just been, it's just, it's been so rewarding working with Tony. And who would have guessed it starts out as this little seed at it at a bar at Encica and here we are a year later and and, and that it's not just us it is becoming this larger it's grander force it's just so exciting I mean it one, really one is. quick story like at uh -oh. a bar someone <laughs> we were talking about this and so they, they go so you're good cop bad cop and I was like I wouldn't say that but <laughs> it's pretty close <laughs> I'm I'm definitely the bad cop in the no, room oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's funny because she has moments where she's like, no, 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 there, that's <laughs> not, not with work. this, but with other things where she's like, no, you said no, right? You said no. Darn it, I lost my train of thought. New questions. Yeah. <laughs> what is the plan to support the show in terms of with writing, with criticism, um, with some type of profile for the artists so that this show will exist longer than the Ansika experience of seeing the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Okay, so alongside the physical exhibition, of course, we have this Facebook page, which I can't even begin to say enough about. I feel like there's more happening in, in that realm that's in many ways, in actually, I almost don't want to say it, but just as important as the physical exhibition. Um, we have a YouTube um channel we have uh the instagram we have the kickstarters and the indiegogo um we are presenting at scanceram in denmark this summer um we want to get the word out on this thing on the facebook page we're rocking it facebook measures likes or positive engagements by likes shares and comments we're averaging between eight and twelve thousand a week and I think you can say, you know, you could say, oh, Facebook, you know, you can just kind of think, is it really relevant? But I think it is. I think those likes are in a way because it gives us some kind of sense uh, of of that that this idea is worth propelling forward and that it, it you can actually really tangibly uh, engage with those numbers, uh, that they're relevant. If you want to say it being a female exhibition is arbitrary, one of the good things about that is, again, it allows us to ignore all other sort of boundaries. And the Facebook page is unbelievably international. We have like more likes from Tehran, Iran, Turkey, Turkey, Buenos India, Aires, all over. Yeah. It's really incredible. There are more people follow our page in Australia than in Kansas City. It's and it, that was just one more thought of, well, what if we try a Facebook page? And here we are, and it's yeah. it's incredible. And then we also have the women from a, around the world area, and that's been such an incredible um, uh, way of of creating another layer of ownership for people people tend to forget that you know especially at Inseca, that america it is pretty good at ceramics but it's about maybe it's it's 10 not percent of what's going on in the world and but also just to plug this for the listeners uh hey everybody out there if you know of a ceramic artist um, who's female and you your and or you yourself are interested in um, you are actually able to send us images through the Facebook network and we'll post those images in the women from around the world layer and and that's been such an amazing resource because it's just another network for everyone to see people doing things all over the world yeah. The great thing about it, and, and this is where there is strength in social media, 
is ceramics, international ceramic shows are just way too expensive. I mean, they're like, you, you know, you, you know, it just costs too much money for you to be able to see ceramics. It's shipping's absurd. So you can go to our Facebook page and I, I haven't counted, but I think we have artists from 70 countries on our, from every continent except Antarctica. And I just, I haven't found an Antarctica we'll clay club yet. On, we'll have to work on Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good place to wrap it up, but I, I wanted first for you guys to actually give the names of those social media sites so that people can follow them um, after they Thank listen. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So can you say the name again? Facebook, our page is 50 Years, 50 Women, a Celebration of Women's Contribution to Ceramics. And with YouTube, if you, uh, if you Google YouTube, 50 Women Ceramics, it will pop up for you right away. And how can people contact you guys directly? Well, we have the info at 50 women. You have the card? I don't know about the card. At this, and see, I'll, I'll send it to you and share it if that'll work for you. Yeah, that um, sounds good. Thank you. We did make a point this and Sika to pass out uh, a whole a bunch of cards in relation to it. So if you came to Ensika, dig through your cards. Yeah, and um, the more the merrier. The exhibition is become a catalyst for something really, really big and that I think both Alex and I are extraordinarily proud of. I am so proud. I love that you use the word catalyst. It's just, um, it's be, it's something that's so much greater than we could have imagined and, and we're a year out still. So it's, it's very exciting. We're, we're so glad we could do this interview with you today. One of the things that, both Alex and I were really conscious about in the selection process. We know that the, the exhibition itself is going to be a big deal. We all know ceramics who ceramic artists who have been on the pork chop hill of Enseek and you know been trying to show their work and you know and we 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 want to have artists in there who this show will impact their careers. We, we we think it's important. Well, to, I'm cutting you off. Sorry. No, the, go ahead. But that we have uh, Bonnie Lynn Parker still finishing up her MFA that she's that she could potentially this show might be uh, the segue into something, the next possibility for her. Um, and that's the case for many of our artists. And on the other side, we have artists like Chris Ostronsky, who's a friend of mine who would who was in the Fletcher Challenge, I think, in 1992 and has been toiling away in obscurity for 20 years. But makes phenomenal work. It makes yeah. great work. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just been a matter for a variety of reasons. She's never gotten that light. and It's time for her to have those accolades or that recognition, and that's really the case we're we're just looking to to support the field in this regard. I mean, I'm sure you know, I know and Alex knows. There are there are artists male and female in every city who are terrific clay artists who for for whatever reason just never get that exposure. And I know we're wrapping up, but again, back to that idea that perhaps you uh you may be uh, uh an amazing artist and you may have an incredible local presence and that's fantastic and or maybe a regional presence or national or international uh and so that this show is is past those barriers per se or those possible hi hierarchies um and that's why we're really digging deep as we were curating the show really trying to find um this this broad spectrum of people working in in the full flavor of the amazing material that we work with every day. And, you know, before the interview, we said thank you um, because we really need, we really want to get out there that this is not the 50 best women because that's an absurdity there. You, you can't, you can't, 
say 50 women there there are thousands and thousands of women there there are thousands and thousands of potters sculptors who are doing exceptional work and we just want to show how much there is well i really look forward to seeing the show thank you for giving us this platform thank you so much yeah i mean this this is we're we're thrilled thrilled yeah Yeah, we're giddy i'm giddy giddy thank you ben this is me being (laughs) giddy thank you so much (laughs) if you'd like more information on the artists on the show or if you'd like more information about the workshops and events that i'll be having in the next couple months you can follow me on twitter instagram and facebook under carter pottery Another great way to support the show is to leave me a comment on iTunes. To do that, search Tales of a Red Clay Rambler under iTunes Podcasts, and you'll find a page that's linked to our show. Thank you guys for the support. We respectfully acknowledge and honor all indigenous communities whose lands we reside on in the United States and recognize that we are uninvited guests on the occupied, unceded, and ancestral lands of over 500 nations indigenous to North America. By acknowledging and reflecting upon the contemporary lived experiences and histories of the indigenous peoples here and globally, We may begin to take essential steps towards creating a more equitable world. Learn more through the hashtag HonorNativeLand initiative of the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture and consider contributing to Indigenous-led organizations doing important work to further health and wellness, sovereignty, and self-determination of the first people of the lands you reside. This podcast is a production of the Brickyard Network, an extension of the Archie Bray Foundation for the Ceramic Arts. To find out more about our lineup of ceramic podcasts, visit brickyardnetwork.org.